Hello and welcome to a video tutorial brought to you by tutvid.com. In this video tutorial we're going to look at removing that timestamp placed on your images by your camera. So anyone that's been photographing or has been into photography for I don't know a good while probably at some point or another has accidentally left that pesky timestamp feature on in the settings section of your camera and there comes a point where you know maybe it's just better to remove the timestamp in Photoshop because a trip back to South Africa isn't quite the easiest way to get images without timestamps at least by the time you get home so we're gonna look at removing timestamps from images um, which you know can be great for you if you absolutely can't retake the photo and you absolutely need to get rid of that timestamp now thankfully most of the expensive digital SLRs around today don't have the timestamp function which is fine with me because I never used it anyway except on one photo shoot and after that I was sure to remember to check before I go shooting anymore that was a lot of time spent in Photoshop removing all of those timestamps at least for my keeper images at least so this tutorial is definitely for you if you've taken a photo or photos and you've left that timestamp option on and you need to get rid of that orange lettering so the first thing we're going to do is zoom in on the orange lettering which in this case is in the bottom right hand corner zoom way in and you can see we've got this orange lettering here now we're going to make a very general very rough selection pretty big because I want to make sure I give myself plenty of space around these timestamp letters to work and have a sampling to do when I go to use different brush tools and healing tools and whatnot so I'm gonna make that big selection I'm gonna hit command or control J to pop it up onto its own layer you can see we now have this on its own layer and we're going to edit that layer just in case we mess anything up uh, beyond the point of no return. So the first thing I'm going to do is use the lasso tool and I'm going to feather it by one pixel too by the way. I'm going to isolate each number here. I'm going to set this to add to selection because I'm just going to do all the numbers in one shot. Just like that and I actually I'm going to do all numbers except for this is zero here on the edge of the shoulder because that zero on the edge of the shoulder is going to be a little bit tricky just because of where it is sitting right there on that high contrast edge and I will show you how to get rid of that but the rest of these letters are going to be a breeze we could use the spot healing brush which is new to CS2 so if you're using CS you won't have this but I'll show you an alternative we can just click and drag I don't really like the spot healing brush it can be kind of touchy at times although you can see it did a heck of a job there and it's doing a pretty good job but if you don't have CS2 you don't have that so we're gonna go to the original healing brush and this if you have Adobe Photoshop CS you have this so this is just like the spot healing brush except you just have to choose a point to sample from so I'm gonna sample from over here and that you sample by holding down the alt key it just works just like the clone stamp tool if you know how to use that but if not hold down the alt key and select somewhere with skin tone obviously and let's just paint over that number and you can see it's just gonna heal it right up for us I love this original healing brush even though you have to get a a reference point here holding alt and clicking I still like it I like it more than the spot healing brush although the spot healing brush can be quite helpful it's quick and easy and if you've got the right kind of image it'll do a pretty good job so now I'm gonna hit command or control D to deselect and you can see all of the letters are gone out of the time timestamp. I'm going to tweak this a little bit here with my healing brush, except for this one here on the edge. Now, this one here on the edge is going to be a real pain in the neck because it's right on that high contrast edge. And the healing brush and even the patch tool, the patch tool is another tool in here that we're going to touch on in a minute, and this, especially the spot healing brush, they all want to blend the edge. Now, if this edge gets blended, you're going to see it's basically grabbing the sky and sticking it into her shoulder. We don't want that. Now, there's a couple ways we can get around this. We can use the lasso tool and zoom way in and just make sure we do not select any of those pixels from the sky. But the easier, faster, I guess just way I prefer is a couple bits of orange left there, is using the clone stamp tool and we're going to set this to a very small brush and basically what we're going to do is we're going to clear ourselves a little channel here so then we can just isolate the rest of the letter and use the healing brush so I'm going to hold down alt and get the edge of her arm and I'm just going to slowly click and work my way up just getting rid of this orange here on the edge I'm gonna come up here to the top and I'm gonna sample near the top of the shoulder just work my way down 
and I'm just gonna inch my way down whoops don't want to do that work my way down ever so slightly and I'll actually show you a little trick because there are a little there's a little bit of orange left in there that I definitely do not want in there okay so we've got ourselves a little gap we're going to use the lasso tool and now we can just grab a rougher selection around that circle and we can just grab the spot healing brush and the spot healing brush ought to do a fine job and it's not so I'm going to grab the regular healing brush which I find I'm defaulting or reverting to quite a bit and it's still not giving me super good results oh you know what I need to do I need to I'm going to come up here to select and hit feather and we're going to feather this selection by let's try two pixels and that's good this will just help blur our edge a little bit more and make it fade a little more naturally now obviously that big dark spot on our shoulder is going to be very obvious so we're going to come back into here I'm going to undo that and I'm going to grab the dodge tool and we're just going to run over it with the dodge tool a couple times just to lighten it up this one is being very troublesome but that ought to look quite a bit better certainly unnoticeable at 100% um, now there are some stray pixels of orange left and there's this little tool called the sponge tool and the sponge tool can be set to desaturate or saturate whatever is being brushed over I'm going to set it to the desaturate mode right now and I'm just going to brush it over and desaturate those bits of orange because desaturated orange is going to match skin tone much better than saturated orange so there we go we've removed the watermark from the first image I'm going to close that image oh wait let me point out one last thing the, we've removed the watermark from this layer that we created if I shut that layer off you see the watermark is back again so what you probably want to do is hit command or control E to merge those layers together and there you go image with no watermark perfect I'm going to close it I'm not going to save it we're going to come on to this second image here now notice with this watermark we're running through some pretty high contrast edges here we've got this tree that it's running through which is basically black and this vegetation that's covering now the fact that the tree is black is actually gonna work out very well for us once again we're gonna grab the lasso tool and we're gonna make a very rough selection around it and I'm hit commander control J to pop it up onto its own layer now what I'm going to do first is I'm gonna use a clone stamp tool I'm gonna to increase the brush size and this tree is dark enough that it's really going to cover up any color differences that we make here. So the clone stamp tool is going to do a fine job without any blending as far as covering up this timestamp, at least on the part that intersects with the tree. So we're going to work our way up the tree here. I'm just alt clicking to select new points because you can see as I'm painting how it's grabbing stuff from that point. You can see that second cursor pops up and that's exactly where it's grabbing information from. If I move off into the green, you can see it, I know I'm painting green everywhere and going crazy. I don't want that though. So I'm just going to come over here and I'm just going to paint away the timestamp that is on the trunk itself. Just like that. Now, what I'm going to do is use the lasso tool, whoops, the lasso tool here, and I'm going to make a rough selection coming down along the side of the tree. I'm going to isolate as much of that dark as I can. And I'm going to grab the spot healing brush, and we're going to see how that's going to work here on this green vegetation. Whoa, that's a little bit of a rough job. Try. Okay, that's not going to work. Let's try the regular healing brush. That does a little bit of a better job. Makes it a little dark, but we can fix that with the dodge tool. We'll lighten it up a little bit. Okay, command or control D, and whoops, made that just a little bit too light. We'll grab the burn tool and just touch that up. That's not going to be noticeable. There is one little fleck of orange there. I'm just going to hit with the clone stamp tool, just like that. And I'm going to zoom out. By the way, I'm zooming out using command or control and the plus and minus keys there. Very quick way to just quickly zoom in and out. All right, I'm going to make the lasso tool again. I'm going to select pixels along this side of the tree. The whole reason I'm using the lasso tool here is because, like I mentioned a minute ago, the patch or the healing brushes tend to blend all of your edges. So the less dark pixels or pixels that are not going to match you have around, 
the better off you are and the better chance you have of getting a good blend. Sometimes the blend works well and sometimes like right there it just does not work well at all. And here I'm going to revert back to my good old healing brush. There, that worked out pretty well. That worked out pretty well. Whoops, don't want that. I'm just sampling from right here in this green vegetation. Okay, good. So far so good. We're just going to cover up the zero down here. And deselect. And we just have one little patch of orange here off to the side of the tree that I'm going to use a clone stamp tool to get rid of. And there we go. Timestamp gone. Okay, you really getting rid of these timestamps, it's going to take some practice. And I'm just trying to show you the tools here. Obviously, every image is slightly different. So, you know, you're not really going to be able to follow exactly what I'm doing here. But I'm just trying to give you some ideas as far as using the clone stamp tool, when you should use the clone stamp tool, and some tricks to using the healing brush. Definitely remember using that lasso tool. You will find that will save you a lot of time and frustration. Like, why is my healing brush doing what it's doing? It's doing that because it feels this need to blend with everything around it. All right, now we have this image here. I actually had this set as image of the week months ago. But great image, and I've just locked a watermark into it just to show you how much a watermark can really wreck an image, but really to show you how to get rid of a watermark. And now this is really an ideal situation. When you've taken a photo like this, well, ideal would be not having the watermark in the first place, or the timestamp I should be referring to it as. But we have the timestamp here. So we're going to use the patch tool. Now click and hold over the spot healing brush and move down to the patch tool. The patch tool is awesome. I absolutely love the patch tool. And when used properly, the patch tool can do some amazing, and I mean absolutely amazing things. When in doubt, or if you have a lot of time on your hands, grab the patch tool and just start playing with stuff. It is such a cool tool, and I love it. And you can do so much with it. It's just phenomenal. All right, we're going to set this to patch the source. Destination will do something completely different, and we're, we don't want that right now. That would actually duplicate this timestamp. We don't want that. So we're going to select a pretty rough selection around our timestamp. And now with the patch tool, all we have to do is click on it and drag it. Look for a patch of clouds that looks like it's going to match up pretty nicely with what's already there. And let go. And eh, that, didn't, that didn't do a very good job. Let's do something more like... We need to get rid of the timestamp. Let's try that there. Nope, still didn't do a good job. We need to find a good patch of clouds, something that's not too dark. I'm trying to look for something that has enough clouds that it's going to match up pretty nicely. Let me get a new selection here with my patch tool. Smaller, maybe will help. Okay, let's try that cloud selection there. And when I deselect it, Eh, I still don't like it. We're going to come up here to select, and we're going to feather our selection, see if we can get some better results. We're going to feather it by 5 pixels. And now, when we let go, that's pretty good. All I'm going to do is come up here to image adjustments, brightness, contrast. I'm going to up the brightness of that little section there just so it matches. Commander Control D to deselect, and check it out. The timestamp is gone, and if that wasn't fast, I don't know what is. I mean, I guess it wasn't too, too fast because I had to get a new selection a couple times. But the more you work with the patch tool, the more used to it you'll get. And with an image like this, it's really ideal, and you don't need to worry about all the healing brushes. And the healing brush would really be a pain in the neck because you've got all these dark colors and these light clouds, and the healing brush really just would not do a good job. The patch tool is great, though. I love it. And that is it. That's it for this one on removing timestamps. I hope that this will help you remove timestamps if you've got a bunch of timestamps to remove or if you have a bunch of images you thought were wrecked because of timestamps. They really aren't. I mean, you can go in and do a lot in Photoshop as far as getting rid of them. And that's how I do it. Uh, several of the techniques I use, at least. Um, certainly the tools I use. And take what you've learned. Go out and do it to some of your own images. I hope you've learned something in this tutorial, and I hope you enjoyed it. Please check out the site. The site is www.tutvid.com, and thank you for watching.